the land of rabbits. This is how it sounds in ancient language, the name of the country in which a lot of bird species live, more than anywhere in Europe, and there are many museums of romanticism, museums of gammon, and many more interesting museums. This is the country where five-string guitar was invented, where broom was patented, where table football was invented, and where first Chupa Chups was launched. Today, the language of this country is spoken by half a million men on the earth, and it's getting more popular. There are a lot of admirers of Spanish language in our country. And it's not just about its ease of learning. There is something similar between our cultures. Today's hero knows it for sure. You are watching Connecting Cultures. My name's Diaz. Hola, amigos. Please come in. Hi, how are you doing? Everything's great. Welcome. That's all I know in Spanish, basically. Um, dear audience, have a good day. Good day to all of you. For those of you who might not know, basically nobody knows, this is the very first episode of the program called Connecting Cultures, where we, Kazakh people, with, together alongside with native speakers, will be finding similarities and difficulties in the, in, in the cultures of Kazakhs and the cultures of other people. On today's episode, we'll be trying to find some similarities and discrepancies between Kazakhs and Spaniards. How are you? We then. For those of you who don't know, again, nobody knows, we've met before, right? So we've met before. This man right here, his name is Julio and he works at the Eurasian National University. How long you've been there? I came in September 2018. I've been living here for more than nine months. And how long you've been here in Nur Sultan, in Kazakhstan? This same long, I started working once I came here. I work as a Spanish teacher at the Eurasian National University. I came here within the program of Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Spain and IACIT, which sponsors this position and awards a scholarship. Thanks to this program, I managed to come to Kazakhstan. I have the work contract at the Eurasian National University. This is the center where Julio teaches and it already became a dear one. Friendly atmosphere, cheerful teachers and curious students who wish to learn Spanish. These all led to teach in an interesting way. You know, Spanish is quite widespread around the world. There are many countries where Spanish is an official language. This language is really important for trade and communication. I see that it's very interesting for Kazakhstani people and they're open to other cultures, probably for some distant far countries, but there are no boundaries in the world now. It can seem big or small, but it all depends upon how you accept it. Today we have an opportunity to travel and meet people from different countries. They might be speaking different languages, but Spanish can become a great tool for communication. So, can I see what we have here? Today we are learning past continuous tense. Great. In this case, we will read a text, and then I will ask some questions about past continuous tense. We will learn rules of how to use this tense, and if you have questions, I will give you answers. Deal? Good luck! Julio has been to about 40 countries as a tourist. He traveled all over the Europe, but he is especially proud of traveling to South America, Armenia and Kazakhstan. He works as a teacher for not so long. He has started his teaching career in Morocco. Kazakhstan is the second country where he came as a teacher of his native language. Many things surprised me in a finest sense of this word, because in Spain we have not much information about Kazakhstan. There are some people with blurred vision of Kazakhstan. When I came to Nur Sultan, that time it was still called Astana. I was pleasantly surprised with the living standards of the city and in the country. In my opinion, it's similar to the lifestyle of Western Europe, for instance to Madrid. All the countries you've already visited, you've been to, this Morocco, Armenia, and uh, the countries in the South America you just said, all right? So, those are all really sunny countries. There's plenty of sun back there. Here, on the other hand, in Nur Sultan, we don't have much sun. The climate is definitely different for the man who came from Spain. It was quite hard to get settled down to the long winter. It was hard. This is the coldest place I have ever been to. However, it is wonderful weather now. 
Weather is so changeable. Summer is great, spring is fine, but winter is too cold, too much snow, but at the same time, it's so sunny. It's quite hard to settle down. Speaking of which, I prefer cold climate. Consider Julio's work loaded. It is so rare when he has an opportunity to take a walk in the city, visit museums and other interesting sightseeings of Kazakhstani capital city. But at the same time, he has managed to act in a movie. Julio has an experience of being an actor, even if it was a bit part. He played the role of a Spanish tourist in a short movie, shot by a team of Yelarna Channel. Julio Navivio came from the homeland of a romantic knight, Don Quixote. It's interesting if he's ready to protect innocent, to help offended and distressed. Is Julio able to use a weapon? There is a unique medieval city, Toledo, which is famous for craft called Damascene. It is a steel with a black enamel crusted with silver, gold and copper. We invite Julio to the craftsman who uses Nomad's weapon production technique. There's a separate book dedicated to armory, like panoply. Kaliola Ahmedjan was happy to welcome guests. His works are stored in Kastev State Museum of Art, Central State Museum, Art Gallery of Georgia, and in private collections of Kazakhstan, England, Sweden, Pakistan, Germany, and Japan. Kaliola Ahmedjan has been busy with the research for many years. He is interested in the history of weaponry and military signs of nomads and folk art of Kazakhs. By the way, he is the only one expert of Kazakh national weapon. Khalil Ahmedran has published about 100 popular scientific books. All the noble warriors were very, very equipped. They, were, they had the best armor. So in order to pierce the armors, they used these particular tops for the arrows. See? Wow, very yeah. interesting. Very interesting, yeah, it depends. It's very hard work. Yeah, it is. What else can I say? Well... Katanas. They'll make all the sli slices. So, Toledo is like a is, is like a center of the golden of golden ornaments and all that kind of stuff. Kazakh people used to say that a Kazakh warrior should uh, should be very skillful and should master five types of weapon. So it's a bow and arrow, sword, a dagger, spear. Yeah, it's again a spear, a chopping weapon, like an axe or a sword. A noble warrior can master all those types of weapons and have them, have, have them at his home. This, is, this belongs to the 8th or 10th century. Mm -hmm. try, try this one out. This, this is the, the 5th uh, century uh, before, the, uh, before the Jesus Christ was born. Before the, like, DC. So the, 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 the Saka nomads used to wear this. So it's the 5th century. That was like, uh, people used to have, uh, people used to wear it like two, th uh, two and a half thousand years ago. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> people used to wear this. Julio is literally dizzy not only because of the information about the history of nomads culture, but with the atmosphere he was introduced to the military past of the country where he's teaching Spanish. It was like in a movie, the way he was back to the past of the country which he didn't know at all. So this one, this one is like waving with a club, you know, like a very heavy club. Uh -huh. um, take a look at, at all the caps that they used to wear. This one is like a nomad. All the clubs, all the types of clubs, you see? This one's made of bone, wooden, metal. 
Это вот копия, наконечника копии. These are the tops for the spears. Вот тоже, видите, как на этих вот на топоре вот такой тоже лезвие сюда крепили. They would also like have uh, a special like a mini sword, a mini sword to to protect mm -hmm. the spear, mm -hmm. so that you could like protect yourself from the swords. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Вот такие были вот многослойные сёганы из десяти слоев шелковой удерживала стрелы. Some, sometimes even the, yeah. sometimes even the, the arrows could not go through this armor, mm -hmm. uh, although it was made of uh, uh, silk. But it was like ten layers of silk. So that, so that ну, вот not every hour could pierce it. Вот такой шарайный разный, видите, mm -hmm. с круглыми этими пластинами, вот так прямоугольными, mm -hmm. разные. So th those are different types of this one. Mm -hmm. It's clear. Где-то вот доспех этот зерцала Жаваш Батер, она в музее Мерке там. This one can, this one can be seen at the museum called Мерке. Вот такие вот формы были. Of different shapes and sizes. To protect your forearm, you would use this one thing. This is the exactly that stuff that he wanted to get to. He would decorate them that way. So it's up to you, basically. This one is preserved at the museum. This is only a replica. So this is the warrior who put the chain armor, and then he put that one. So he's like fully protected. It's like protective belt. Do you think that after all information that Julio received, he was going to take a rest? No way. He decided to continue his way of learning. It seems that books don't give all the necessary information which he can receive in the museum. is actually an elder, very elder and very wise person, a sage that could solve any single problem only by the power of his word. Uh -huh. He was just very, very wise to solve every single problem. So if you want to, to stop the fight or if you want to stop mm -hmm. the war from coming, you simply uh, gather all the articles, mm -hmm. they like create the council, they decide what uh -huh. to do, what, to be, what needs to be done, what had to be done and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And th so they, they can actually prevent the war. This is like a very, very interesting, um, interesting topic to talk about because to touch because um, so th this idea of axicals and the idea of asking uh, elder, elder, elder people to solve your problems uh, only can be found uh, in the region of Central Asia mm -hmm. about the fact. Uh, that elder people could solve every single problem. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. They don't start any war before they just uh, get an advice from an elder generation. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, that's it something. Like, like in ancient yeah. times yeah. in Europe, yeah, like exactly. in ancient Greek. Exactly, and... exactly. I think we've lost this tradition because nowadays many countries they wage war, they don't have a council, yes. they decided by themselves. Mm -hmm. Even though they are educated people, they go to Oxford and all those kind of universities, but they still wage wars. Yes. Yeah, that's pity. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a bit. Alright, let's see what, what next are we got. Constitution? I feel like I'm a judge. Ticha, ticha, ticha. The shark is truly appalling because there's nothing you can do about it. If, yeah. for example, I would prefer to, to, to meet a lion than to meet a shark. A shark because Sharks in the water, you know, uh -huh. and you're not a swimmer, yeah. right? Yeah. So against the lion, you will have like spare three, five seconds uh -huh. alive, and against the shark, no. Yes. You have like zero chance at all. Zero chance. <laughs> it's, it's not our place. Exactly, exactly, exactly. That's what I was trying to say. I realized that I want to start learning Spanish again. After I spent some time with Julio, it sounds beautiful, it is spoken by the third part of the Earth population, and in the 18th century, Spanish language was considered as diplomatic language. Meanwhile, Julio will learn Kazakh, because this is the only way to get closer to the culture of the country where you live. Without saying goodbye, see you next time on Connecting Cultures. Hasta la vista!